Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Chap- 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strong words of human reasoning. Human reasoning. Say human reasoning. reasoning. We start thinking how we're going to, when we are told to say, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. We start thinking, how am I going to fight this thing? The man of God prophesies in your life, says, you're going to be rich. And then you start thinking, how am I going to be rich? You are fighting against that weapon. Which weapon? the thinking of your mind. Because here, the man of God has already said what God has told him, that you will prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The man of God has already said, you will, read, you, will, you will live in a mansion. And you start wondering, how am I going to live in a mansion? I get paid 2000 The Bible says, no weapon that is formed against you, no matter how much you get paid, the Bible says, you shall buy without money. Hallelujah. So we stand on the word of God because the word of God says, I shall buy without money. I shall prosper. I shall live in prosperity. Hallelujah. I shall get married properly. And me and my husband, me and my wife shall not get divorced. That is the thought that you are supposed to be having. Not how I'm go- maybe I'm going to be divorced. Maybe I'm going to lose my marriage. Today I heard a topic on the radio where they are saying, they are asking a question to say, how are you, if your husband or your wife dies today, how, are you, how long are you going to take to get married? I said, this is nonsense. Can you see? People start thinking of dying before God says, you shall live 120 years. You shall not die, but you shall live to declare the works of the Lord. With long I will I'll satisfy you. You start thinking even before you reach 50 years. Hallelujah. Battle of the mind. Say battle of the mind. Hallelujah. Let's read on. The strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their thoughts. They are rebellious thoughts. I don't have money. But hey, I see that money, the way he's carrying his wallet. Maybe if I can get his wallet, maybe, maybe there's 5,000 rands. Maybe I can have something in my pocket. It starts with your thoughts. After your thoughts, you are going to act on your thoughts. Hallelujah. It starts with your thinking, then it becomes an action. Hallelujah. So, you start battling with your own mind. If I go and the woman with the issue of blood, she says, if only I could touch the hem of his garment and I shall be healed. That is the mindset of a Christian. If the man of God says, 
you'll be rich. You'll start praying. God, the man of God has declared, I shall be rich. Father, I stand on the word. That says, wealth and riches shall be in my house. That is my thoughts. If he says, son, I pray for you that you shall be promoted. I start praying, God, the man of God has declared I shall be promoted. Let promotion come upon me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the word of God is our weapon. The word of God is that that we depend on. So, capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. How do you obey Christ? You obey Christ by listening to the word. Faith comes by hearing and only hearing the word of God. Amen. Faith without works is dead. So you start acting on what has been declared upon your life. You, you don't start acting on what you are thinking. No. You start acting on what the word of God says. Amen. What does the word of God say upon my life? I shall live long. I shall not die prematurely. I shall not be shot with a stray bullet. That is the prayer of a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read on. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. Look at the ob ob obvious facts. Those who say they belong to Christ must recognize we belong to Christ as much as they do. <laughs> as much as we do. We are Christians. Amen. Deacon Farai was just telling us that as we come to this building, it shall become one of the most beautiful buildings. We don't know how it will become beautiful, but with prayer, God will do it. Because this is his house. He said, you shall build me a house, but you shall not, you shall not have an inheritance of it but you shall build him a house because this is the place where he dwells. Says this is the house of God. We shall beautify it. You and me shall beautify it. Amen. I may seem to be boasting too much about the authority given to us by the Lord. <laughs> authority has been given to me and you to declare and decree things and they shall come to pass. How do, you become, how do you become a person who will be dominating if you do not obey the word? You cannot dominate without saying the word. You say the word, I am prospering and I shall prosper. Increment shall be my portion and it shall be increased. That is the word of God. You go to a hospital to visit someone. When you look at the person, ah, this person looks like he's going to die. That is not a Christian. That is not the word of a Christian. When you go to the hospital, you pray for that person and you tell them to say, the word of God says, Restore, this is the season of God's restoration. Whatever the canker worm has eaten, God will restore. Whether your body has become tiny, but God will restore your health. That is the word of God that we declare when we go and visit sick people. Not when you go and visit people in hospital. You start now discouraging them. Yo, you are finished. You look like you are going to die. Ah, what kind of Christian are you? You go and visit your relative who is, is, is sick bed. Is, I don't know. He's sick in bed. And you, you start saying, yo, you are finished, my sister. I don't even know what. You start even crying. Why are you crying? Pray. Speak the word. Amen. The word says, with long life, I will satisfy you. Healing and cure shall come upon you. This is what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So God has given us many weapons that we can stand on. So the Bible says, I may seem to be boasting too much about the authority given to us by the Lord, but our authority builds you up. It doesn't tear you down. So I will not be ashamed 
of using my authority. My authority is that I shall become prosperous. This church shall have money and this building shall become the most beautiful building. As it has been declared, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and 3. Once you were dead because of your disobedience, number one, you, we disobey God's instructions. That's why we see we, we are no longer doing what God wants us to do. In the, olden day, in the olden days, when someone was told to do something, they followed the instructions. Amen. The children of Israel, they were told to run seven times around the building. And they did that. And they were wondering even themselves, <laughs> how is this building going to fall? They were wondering, their thoughts was, but this is concrete, pure, pure, pure concrete. How is it going to fall? But they still obeyed God. And they continued to go around. And to their shock, the wall just fell on its own. I remember when dad was preaching about it, he says, the wall actually was swallowed down. Yes. It did not just fall. It was swallowed down. Amen. That is God for you. So God, whenever he promises something, it shall come to pass. Amen. Verse 2. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world. Obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world, he is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey. It starts with the heart. In the heart. Hey, you know, hey, when I look at it, starts like that. Even to go and steal, it starts like that. Even to leave church, it starts like that. Many people leave church. Because of the thoughts. Our fathers testified to say, one day when he went to a crusade, a man of God was preaching the word. And he thought the man of God was told what he was doing. Many of us have, have, I'm also an example. When I was at the boarding school, I went for a, a, a church service on a, on, a, on a Saturday, because we used to go on a Saturday. And this woman was busy preaching yeah, you guys who like going for entertainments, you know, if you don't surrender to, 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 to Jesus, to our Lord Jesus, you, you, you are going to hell. I'm like, mm, every Saturday I'm in entertainment. Is this woman talking about me or what? And she mentioned again, yeah, some of you, you like too much fighting. And that time I used to love fighting. I never cared who was in front of me. Whether you were big, I will stand with you and I will throw. Hallelujah. So, we are following the powers of darkness instead of obeying what God is saying. Sunday is a church day. Or Saturday, men, we need to come and work. Ah, no, I can't go. Because, you know, this week, last week I was there, this week I must go back there again, no. And then they are asking about Jubilee Sunday. Give, it shall be given back to you. Isn't that what the Bible says? Amen. And you will rebuke the devourer on our behalf. But if we do not obey what God is saying, the money is being stolen by the devourer. And we start crying. Why am, I not, why am I not having money? Why am I not getting a house? Why am I not buying a car? We are not obeying God's instruction. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is awesome. God will never lie nor forsake us. Amen. Amen. Number verse 3. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires. The passionate desires. What is the passionate desires? We want to go to nightclub because our friends are going to nightclubs. We want to go and drink because our friends are drinking. We want to smoke because our friends are, are smoking or drinking, whatever it is. Because we are following what the world is doing instead of following what Christ did for us. Hallelujah. So we need to follow what Christ does. The passionate desires and the inclinations of our sinful nature. But very natural. 
we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. So if each and every one of us has fallen into that trap. But you and me, God has opened our eyes and God has opened our ears. And we are no longer thinking like the world thinks. We are thinking as Christians, as the righteous of Christ. Amen. Amen. Point number one. We are responsible not only for our actions, but also for our thoughts. We are responsible not only for our actions, but also for our thoughts. How? How? If we go to the book of Acts, let's quickly go to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8. The book of Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 and verse number 22. The Bible reads, Repent, O your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you, he will forgive your evil thoughts. That's the NLT. Repent of your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive your evil thoughts. Acts chapter 8 verse 22. Hallelujah. So the Lord says we must repent of our evil thoughts. We are responsible not only for our actions, but also for our thoughts. How? God has judged people based on thoughts in the past. We can go to Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 in the Good News translation. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. The Bible reads, When the Lord saw how wicked everyone on earth was and how evil their thoughts were all the time, he was sorry that he had ever made them and put them on the earth. He was so filled with, with regret that he said, I will wipe out those people I have created and also the animals and the birds because I am sorry that I made any of them. But the Lord was pleased with Noah. Say, let the Lord be pleased with me. Hallelujah. Number B. How? Jesus Jesus specifically condemns sin of thoughts. The book of Matthew, in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 28. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 28. The Bible reads, But now, I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman and wants to possess her is guilty of committing adultery with her in his heart. That is the word of God. Amen. So whatever we desire looking at, whatever we are thinking at, Whatever we are desiring, when we look at a skirt passing or when we look at the trousers passing, our Lord condemns. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, point number two. We are accountable for thoughts. And thoughts are so important. Why? Because action is birthed in our thoughts. Action is bent in our thoughts. I'm trying to imagine, you know, those people who do not reason in their heads with the word of God. 
like those men who were arrested, who raped the girls who were acting. These girls are acting. They are making a film. Then them, obviously, started planning a long time ago. Because you cannot just go and start doing something. You start thinking, first of all. You start planning, first of all. And after you plan, then you start making the action. You start moving towards that thing that you are thinking of. Hallelujah. So when they started thinking, then the evil thoughts that they had in their mind started manifesting in their brains. The devil is at work on the earth. The Bible says the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. How does he devour you? He goes around to look around to check who is not praying, to check who is not in the word, to check who is lying. And he comes to enter you. And once he enters you, he goes and brings his demons. And his demons also, they don't come alone. They come with their brothers and sisters. And they start working on you. The next day you find yourself in the streets. You'll be sleeping in the streets. And you wonder why people are living in the streets. It is because of the thoughts of their minds. Started stealing a spoon. You go and sell to buy one sweet. Next day you go and steal the chicken that was in the fridge. You go and sell where they are doing chisanyama. The next day you are arrested. The third day you end up in prison forever. You come out, you come and say, ah, prison is a nice place because the devil is operating in your head. You go back in prison, you come out, now you go and start killing because it started with a small little thing. Hallelujah. Say, that shall not be my portion. Hallelujah. Every thought is a seed, remember, that you plant. Every thought is a seed. Every thought is a seed. People might be wondering, oh, why, why do you call yourself more fire? <laughs> you know, I was, I was sent somewhere, I, I remember testifying. I was stuck there. And then I started reading the Bible. And I, I arrived at First Kings chapter 18. And I read, and then God answered Elijah with fire. I said, wow, that is interesting. And I came, I came back from where I went. Dad was preaching something. He says, how do you have a ringing tone? He says, lonely. I am so lonely and you are not married. How do you dominate your mind to say I'm not married, I'm going to get married. You can't get married, your ringing tone is lonely. The devil is working on your loneliness. Amen. Sounds like a joke, but it's the truth and reality of the word of God. The demons work on what you are thinking of. A famous boxer that we love very much, Floyd. Floyd was called Pretty Boy. Then he started realizing that he's making more money. He changed his name to Money Mayweather. Everything that he does is to make extra more money. He doesn't just do things to just make little money. Uh -uh. He makes money in millions. Right now he's a mouth billionaire. You cannot dominate when your thinking or your thoughts are I only get a thousand runs. So I can. A thousand runs, we were taught about a servant who left talents. How can, how can you keep talents hidden under your bed? You need to activate your talent. Activate your talent. How do you activate your talent? The Bible says, I do not know how to pray as I ought, but the Holy Spirit will intercede for me and you will teach me. He will teach me how to make money, extra money. He will teach me how to save in the house of God. The Holy Spirit will teach me how to operate the cameras. The Holy Spirit will teach me how to play the instruments. The Holy Spirit will teach me how to be an usher. When someone is coming, you smile at them. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, ma'am. You're welcome. Oh, what's your name, by the way? 
Oh, sis Vuyo, you are welcome. Don't feel at home. Be at home. I learned something from dad. Dad knows everyone's name in this church. Everyone's name. Dad knows everyone's name. It's not easy. It's not easy. But he knows everyone. By name. The spirit of God is with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, these evil thoughts, we must destroy them and remove them out of our thoughts. So, every thought is a seed. If you plant apples, you don't expect that apple to become a mango. Never. This, the apple will be an apple. The mango will be an, a mango. So, when you plant a maize cob, it will become maize. So, every seed that you plant, whatever you do, whatever you think of in your head, it is a seed that will manifest one day in our lives. Amen. Amen. So we need a good seed. Say, I need a good seed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 and 22. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 and 22. Verse 21, you have heard that people were told in the past, do not commit murder. Anyone who does will be brought to trial. Verse 22, the first part of 22, but now I tell you, if you are angry with your brother, you will be brought to trial. So whenever you are thinking of your brother, what he did wrong against you and you keep it in your mind, that thing will become something that will be used against. That's why the police said, don't say anything or it will be used against you in the court of law. Hallelujah. So we need to know what we are saying about ourselves. We are royal priesthoods. We are kings. We are gods. A god says, when, 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 when God went to Ezekiel, he, pre, he placed his hand on Ezekiel and he said, son of man, prophesy to these dry bones. What are you prophesying to? What are you saying in your minds? Are you saying you'll be rich? Are you saying you'll be poor? Are you saying you'll save in the house of God? Are you saying you'll give in the house of God? Or you'll just sit and listen to the word from Sunday to Sunday of January to December. You'll be just coming to the house of God, listening to the word and doing nothing in the house of God. You know, giving is an instruction from God. It's not an instruction from our father or our mother. It is from the word of God. So when they say, Jubilee Sunday, it is an offering for building the house of God. The money doesn't go to his pocket. The money goes to the building. As you can see, look, look, look. Look at, look at the carpet, how it beautiful it is. I wish I can sleep there and just take a photo and show people, say, how beautiful our church looks like. It's not there, but we are going there. And it shall become like, if you go outside, you look how neat it is. It starts like that, small little thing. God will trust you with a small little thing and then he will increase it. God is trusting you with his house first. If you do right for his house, he will do right for you. It starts with your thoughts. Am I going to give? Am I going to save? Am I going to go to church? You know, I was so blessed by our brother. For the first time in the church, he just stood up. I came here looking for a job, but I found a house of worship. Oh my goodness me, you don't understand. I was looking for a job, but I found a house of worship. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. What a blessing. What a blessing. I pray that God will bless him with that job that he's desiring. He, he came seeking for a job. He came seeking for a job. And he found a house of worship. And he rejoiced. He never cared who looked at him. He just stood up there. Is there anyone who wants to surrender their lives to the Lord? Hey, if they see me, hey, everyone will be saying oh, he's a born again. He's, God says, if you accept me in front of everyone, I'll also accept you in front of everyone. Amen. That is God for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, the last one. I'll continue sometime. Point number three. Some characteristics of the thoughts within the mind of the wicked are, number one, they devote to earthly things. Philippians chapter 3, verse 18, B, and 19. You can read in the Good News translation. Hallelujah. They devote to earthly things. That's one of the characteristics of the thoughts within the mind of the wicked. Philippians chapter 3, I repeat, verse 18, B, and 19. Number B, they don't think of God at all. God does not exist. Anything that Christians do is foolishness to them. Why do you go to church every Sunday? Why do you always talk about Jesus? Why do you all, you always, when there's a party at work, you are not there. Why? You are, I'm going to church. I'm going to save my God. I'll dance for my God. I'll rejoice for my God. Psalms chapter 10, verse 4. Psalms chapter 10, verse 4. Number C. They are blinded. This one we need to read. We can read from the TPT. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. For their minds have been blinded by the God of this age, leaving them in unbelief. Their blindness keeps them from seeing the day spring light of the wonderful news of the glory of Jesus Christ, who is the divine image of God. Spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness. You cannot see even something that God wants you to do or what God wants to do for you, you cannot see. Elisha sent his servant to say, go and check if there's a crowd. He went, one, he couldn't see anything. He went, two, he couldn't see anything. We were taught on Sunday to say, you can only be able to see something when you have been given authority by higher authority. When the hand of God or when the servant of God has placed his hand on you, Elijah prayed and said, go again, one. Go again, two. Go again, three. That's when he could see. So we need higher grace to see many things. We need higher grace to listen to what God is saying. We need higher grace for the thoughts that we have in our minds. Not just ordinary thoughts, but the thoughts of Christ. Because as a man thinks it, so is he. If you think you are prospering, you will prosper. If you think you will get a job, you will get a job. If you think that you are going to die, you will die. We are not saying you are not going to die, but you can't die prematurely. Because the Bible says, 
He came to give us abundant life. With long life, I will satisfy you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I'll change my mindsets. From today, if I need to dominate, I need to change my mindsets. I need to read the word of God. I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, as I conclude, the Holy Ghost will remind you. The Holy Ghost will teach you. If you want to prove what I'm saying, one day you'll be doing something and you forget. Say, say, Holy Spirit, what was I doing? And the Holy Spirit will remind you. That is the Holy Spirit. I hope you are blessed in Jesus' name. Help me to welcome our dad in the name of Jesus.